We're really excited to be working with Free Trade, who've sponsored this video. Free Trade believes in commission free investing for everyone. This means you won't pay any commission when investing your spare cash. While other brokers charge up to £12 per trade, Free Trade doesn't, so you can keep more of your money. And where they do charge, like on FX, it's fair and transparent. The design of the app makes it simple and easy to use, which is great for any experience level. From beginners starting to educate themselves on the benefits of investing to experts already in the know. You can start investing from just two pounds and they offer these things called fractional stocks. This basically means you can buy a small piece of expensive US companies like Google, Tesla and Apple. With over 700,000 investors on board and having won the best online trading platform at the British Bank Awards five years running, they're an investment platform you can trust. Now for the best bit, if you create and fund your account with just 50 pounds using our link, you will get a free share worth between 10 and 100 pounds. That could be in anything from Ford to Spotify. Remember, when you invest, your capital is at risk. The value of your portfolio can go up as well as down and you may get back less than you put in. This is not financial advice. You should always do your own research on what investments are right for you before investing or seek the advice of a professional. Yo guys, welcome to the last lap. Don't forget to drop a lovely juicy five-star rating if you're watching an Apple podcast or Spotify. Hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Welcome back to the last lap podcast post Monaco Grand Prix race edition but we'll talk about lots of other stuff as well not just the Monaco Grand Prix although I would say Niran mm. that by modern standards it's been a pretty pretty decent race well it was yeah I mean it was it was very solid by Monaco standards it was and as, as a as a fully fledged member of the Monaco Haters Society you are um, copyrighted um, yes. I am yes no you're, you're not you're I'm very much not. yeah no, I no, was very impressed that I will remind everyone that the main uh, the main addition that I wanted for Monaco was sprinklers. We got water. Natural sprinklers. We got natural natural sprinklers. Yeah. Mother Nature thick. sprinkled all over the Monaco Grand Prix circuit. <laughs> Sounds messy. It does. It, does. <laughs> yeah, but it was a bit messy, Crazy. but not many people DNF, so mm, all yeah. good. And from Lance. Katie? Thank you for joining us for the podcast. You watched along you. with us. I did. Race, um, a Monaco Grand Prix. Pretty memorable one, I'd say. As much as Max did end up winning by a massive margin, at the end of the day, it was... A lot went on once the rain came out. Alonso couldn't get the move done into turn one, which I think from you know, a neutral point of view, you're hoping it was going to happen. But all in all, it was was a decent Grand Prix. It was. I mean, normally Monaco is kind of known for the one-stop strategy that we get, but with the rain, obviously strategies were like all over the place. We had Magnussen out on the slicks when everybody else was on wets. We had people not sure when to pit for wets, some pitting for slicks and then literally laps later coming in for wets. So it was a real mix of, of options up and down the grid. And yeah, we got some different faces on the podium, which was nice. Esty Besty mm, got up there, yes, which I'm very happy yes. about. So yeah, I think like you say, on Monaco standards, sometimes with Monaco, it feels like it's either an absolute banger or we have one that's pretty forgettable. Um, so it was good to have this one up there. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Hmm. That is a point. There's no real middle of the road Monaco Grand Prix, is there? No. It's, very, it's very just like either there was one overtake yeah. all race <laughs> yeah. or all hell broke loose. Yeah, it, it's reliant on factors outside of... of control I mm. guess a lot of the time and obviously that rain coming because we didn't know you know <clears throat> some teams thought it was going to come on lap like 35 it wasn't that early it was quite considerably late I mean Lando pitted for for slicks only a few laps before the rain started to come down didn't it but it had already this is what pains me it had already started raining when mm. it had came in on parts of the track we were yeah. already getting like oh George Russell on the radio saying it's spitting guys mm. not gonna lie blimey <laughs> yeah. all that jazz whatever <laughs> you already said <laughs> that, that the blimey you'd already, version you already said <laughs> that uh, and then Lando pitted and again same with Fernando as well but the Wikipedia page probably won't be that no into this race no. But overall, Stroll and Perez, thank you very much, guys. Yeah, they gave us a lot of shenanigans at the back, didn't they? <laughs> shenanigans. Yeah. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, it was pretty stinky. Well, because <clears throat> I suppose this is the kind of race that really showcases how much of a team sport Formula One is. And we saw, you know, Lando in Russia when mm -hmm. he didn't pit, should have mm -hmm. pitted a bit mm -hmm. too early this time. Like it all, it was mad actually how little the finishing order changed from when it was dry to wet even though it was really exciting, it didn't change that much because I think so many teams went down the right aisle. But also, do we think Fernando and Aston Martin maybe bottled an opportunity to win this race by pitting him on the slicks? 
I think wasted so. pit stop yeah i mean like you say he's kind of ended up still in second and the time difference max seemed to just be like quite clear but yeah like you say a wasted amount of time and monaco's quite a long pit lane as well so you do waste i think it's about 30 seconds here with a pit stop so potentially there could have been another alonso win or like i say another the first in 10 years mm. <laughs> but um yeah we'll well i guess we'll never know because of an ill-timed pit stop that was even weirder than the Lando one, wasn't it? Because like the Lando one, it was like, it's spitting. And it was like, well, it's probably not a great idea, mm. lads, but I can understand you, you know, whatever. Mm. With the Fernando one, people were already actually on into. Well, his teammate was. Yeah. So I don't, yeah. maybe so the, just the leave data him was out. weird. Or, yeah. yeah. I, either just leave him out and get the data from Stroll mm. or just do the same. Like, yeah. I, that made no sense to bit him that early onto the, or that yeah. late, sorry, onto the slicks. I don't know. But. Yeah. I, I, I think... Look, again, when you look at the time delta, Fernando wouldn't have caught Max just based off the numbers. However, obviously, yeah, if at you are... At the end, though, there was a point where he was only about 17 seconds behind. Yeah, and, and if that. you're closer, you can put on more pressure. Yeah, you're, you're more you saw of a Max figure. making a few little mistakes towards the end. Mm. He got quite lucky, didn't he? He was he just did. before the tunnel. Um, uh, yeah, when he was, was still yeah. on slicks. That was actually. when he was still on slicks, yeah. But yeah, you're right. He, yeah, like, even coming around to back, yeah. like hit the wall. Yeah. Like Max isn't one to... like Even, even if you're like, you're 20 seconds ahead, Max, just take it easy. He's not... That's just not in his nature, is it? No. No. Which, I mean, but he's got the chance to back it up. I mean, we talked about, you know, driver of the day, potential candidates, and it's easy to gloss over Max because he's just so consistently impressive. Mm -hmm. But we kind of take it for granted. Like, that, like, can we talk about that qualifying session? Because <laughs> even Q1 was amazing. Yeah. Like, I was, I was riveted. Yeah. I, I was, it was so good. Sergio slapping it <laughs> into the scenery. But um, it was just the, the track. Was Lewis almost. It was the, the evolving yeah, it so quickly. Yeah. It was the evolution. evolution yeah. was I mean, insane. Joe was P one at one stage. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was great. But I mean, do we think that? Because I think the only team who seemed kind of off the pace was Haas. Like there was lots of cars that could have got to Q three. Even Albon doing what Albon does because he's great <laughs> in the Williams almost getting to Q three as well. Yeah, P yeah, thirteen yeah. in the end, but yeah. But no. Ultimately, I, I think that that showcased what Monaco. What's so great about Monaco, right? Yeah. yeah it's just such a short lap you know ultimately you're going to get like a smaller time delta as any any minor mistake anywhere you know could be crazily costly just because the walls are there and you've not got much time to recoup it i mean i still don't understand obviously i'm taking a jump here into q3 but max verstappen's final sector yeah <laughs> i watched like a visualizer of like both the cars that, yeah, yeah, yeah going and alonso had like was just had a whole car's width on max until rascas and then it was just like, it was like he didn't break. It's like he wall ride, wall ride, wall <laughs> road. road? road? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Wall road. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we did see that in the NASCAR not that long ago, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It was almost like he did that. I don't know. Whether, yeah, it was crazy. Um, the amount of time he gained, mental, mental final sector, crazy lap. Hmm. It really was. Yeah. We, I was so sure that Alonso had it in the bag. But then I guess... You, you've seen how inevitable Max Verstappen is that there's a part of me that was like Max is somehow going to get this we had to just feel yeah. it but yeah it was was amazing especially as you say like it's such a short sector as well mm -hmm. to make so much time up was just brilliant um, but yeah qualifying was stunning yesterday and you know the last few years that we've had in Monaco have been affected by a red flag towards the end of the session so perhaps by not having that um, it made it much more exciting uh, and also like you say the, the fact that although we didn't have a red flag that there could be one around every corner mm -hmm. like anyone could cause one and we also had lots of big players out early on you know I say big players like obviously Perez but likes to stroll as well he had an absolute shocker of a qualifying yep. so yeah, that was kind of like normally a guaranteed <laughs> top 10 position for him so that was somebody that was going to be in there but yeah it was great I love yeah, it yeah. <laughs> and I mean Max was the last car to set his time mm. so you know if anyone's because that's the risk isn't it going late and he's done that every year and yeah. it's never paid off yeah so but now it did <laughs> now it did <laughs> yeah because one time I remember yeah. when yeah when, when Charles um, yeah. crashed didn't he Sergio yeah and well. Verstappen was just coming yeah. up to with the Charles one just coming up, I remember his reaction yeah uh, it was obviously and then human. last year with Perez same yeah. thing yeah so what do, we, what do we think about the whole idea of, again, we didn't, you know, it was great because no one crashed, but if people do and getting lap times taken off of you, if you cause red flags and all that, do we think that's a sensible change? Because there's been talking about that for a lot, quite a while now. Well, the driver who causes the red flag gets the yeah, time so. taken away. I think that would be. I think that's just a yeah. reasonable, I think they do that in... Indy? Indy? I, I think, think they yeah, do it in Indy. I, do. I think at the end of the day, like obviously you've not been in it on purpose, but like if you are going to cause disruption to everybody else, mm. then, you know, realistically, you shouldn't be gaining out of that because ultimately you do. 
Yeah. If you're the one that brings out the red flag, you've probably sat a lap before and you're probably going to keep, like Charles, <clears throat> when he crashed from like first, yeah. kept his pole because of yeah. it. And I don't think that's, you know. Yeah, I don't think there's any drivers that are capable of foul play on the grid or anything yeah, like no, that. Yeah, no, no, of course. Yeah. It's just, it just but seems think, unfair. Yeah, it seems I like agree. an unfair advantage by accident more than anything. Yeah. Well, apart from Sergio, I guess, because yeah. Yeah. screw <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it didn't quite work out for him this year, did it? Um, yeah, Checo just... Not not a good race at all. Yeah, in, interesting change. six stopper strategy as well. Yeah, uh, wouldn't recommend personally. <laughs> Look, I think the title challenge was a long shot anyway. But obviously now it's mm. what thirty nine points between Max and Checo, and we've got a lot of the street circuits out of the way. You know, with yeah. Catalonia now. Thirty nine points, I think, was the difference that Leclerc had to Verstappen in Austria last year. Really, uh, Australia, oh. sorry, not Austria. Yeah, so yeah. you know, there's still time. Okay, still interesting. Time, but interesting. <laughs> what? Charles Leclerc wins. The <laughs> oh, that's not what you're going for. <laughs> 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 well, look, I mean, again, we've got. We talked about this a bit in in the live show. Obviously, you've got the ATR that Aston Martin have until the end of June. I, I could see other cars catching Red Bull by the end of the season, but not quick enough to outscore them enough mm. to be anywhere near in the title fight. I, I think that's, I think that's fair. Cause it's like, it's not like you score fewer points. Like whether you win the first race of the season or the last race, it's still 25 points. So and again, like, Red Bull <clears throat> have this great luxury of just being like, oh, we've wrapped this up now. Mm. Next year's car. Right. Cool. Well, everyone saw the Red Bull floor though. Yeah. After yeah. Checo's accident. But I saw something, it was online, so it could just be absolute rubbish, but people being like, they couldn't even wrap their heads around it. Like, it looks so complex and so different that they were like, mm, I don't understand what I can, means. I can see that. Yeah. I can see half Whether that's looking just... at that floor and going, <laughs> yeah, no, we're good lads. I thought it just that. had to be like, flat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a slab of wood yeah. on like, the bottom of the car. Like, that's a like a fence or something. <laughs> that's, the bottom. that's the new e-secret. Mm. It's a strap a fence to the bottom <laughs> of the car. <laughs> It yeah. was mad how high the cherry pickle was picking up them cars. I like literally they were like in orbit. I bet they must have been proper nervous mechanics. <laughs> Some photographers would have made a lot of money on selling mm. those spy shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dollar, dollar bills. Absolutely. Mm. I'm running the wrong industry. Yeah, I know. Well, look, hopefully. Get out there with your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think based off race space, I think, you know, the closest team right now to Red Bull as a racing car, as a complete package, seems to be Aston Martin. Um, but obviously there's been Aston Martin news as well. Mm. 2026, mm. they will be running Honda <coughs> power units. Did anyone, did anyone actually see this coming, by the way, before like... There are a few reports three weeks on the Monday. Oh no, not that long like, ago. Is it yeah, like just like a before. strategic sort of thing for the future? I remember hearing some rumours around like Miami right. about it, but it's okay. like not that long ago. But just mm. Aston, Aston Martin and Honda as a partnership just made like no... Not made no sense to me at all. I, get, I completely get it, but like, it's just not something I would have thought about before yeah. rumours started happening. I don't know. Yeah. Did like racing Point's had a, well, Racing Point, Aston Martin, whatever you want to call it nowadays, Jim. has had a Mercedes PU in the back of it for so long. Yeah. yeah. That it's kind of, yeah, it's yeah. like, they seem like a happily, happy marriage going on there, you <laughs> yeah. know? Mm. Um, behind the know. scenes, yeah. bare arguments. Yeah, yeah. Mum and dad are fighting behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> think of the kids. Well, because I, I, I think a lot, <laughs> a lot of the way it's been kind of sold is that you need a works engine deal to be competitive yeah. in Formula One. Which is that, do we think that's true? It's not even true right now. Mm. Aston Martin are ahead of Mercedes. Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> but then obviously Red Bull have the, yeah, that's, a, I think it, it helps. Does it guarantee anything? I mean, look, we get into 2026, we could see a big delta. I don't think we see much of a delta t between the engines now. Mm. I think there's been enough time for like most of the engines to converge and there's not a massive advantage from having one power unit over the other, but ho I mean, hopefully like for Aston Martin, they hit the ground running because Lawrence has clearly got big ambitions with that team. Yeah. He keeps going on about this five-year plan. I don't know if this 2026 engine regs falls into the five-year plan because I feel like he's been saying it for so long. I don't know what year we're actually on. <laughs> it's actually a 10-year plan. Yeah. Right. Um, but no, it's certainly an interesting call from Aston Martin because yeah, it's a complete change, isn't it? Like they're going to be very familiar with that Mercedes PU in the back. And although you say, you know, that they're performing better than the Mercedes team now, up until a few years ago, Mercedes were just miles clear of any customer teams. In yeah. fact, it only took Sergio Perez in Sakir when the, from 2014, from when these new engines came in, he was the first car to actually win that was a customer team of Mercedes. Mm. Every other Mercedes power unit win was a Mercedes car. Yeah. Um, obviously, Daniel Ricciardo did the same in Monza. So it's been done now by two teams, but um, yeah, like perhaps they just feel like Mercedes are going to be, because they're not performing well on track, they're maybe going to put more focus into the PU and pay less attention to maybe customer teams. And so they're deciding to go down a Honda route. Yeah. So, I mean, 
we'll see if it pays off. We've seen the relationship mm. with Honda go very well for people like Red Bull, but also disastrously wrong for people like McLaren. So well, yeah, and it's interesting as well because obviously you've got Fernando Alonso mm. repowered by a Honda car, which I think is just going to. Well, he would be, just love to deliver some more team radio. He's work. forty-one now. Yeah, he'll oh, be like oh, yeah, forty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you never know. We'll just go <laughs> he, on forever. We came though. second today. Yeah, so I know this is the thing. He yeah. doesn't show any signs of. That's what I mean. Up. Age mm. is but a number. It is. It is. Oh. And I, I think like it just does feel like a. I mean, Honda have got a habit of this. They they had a mm. title winning car in that Braun, which should have been a Honda, mm -hmm. but then they flogged mm. the team. Yeah, they had a title-winning car with Red Bull that now they were at, that were out, and it made no sense. Now they've taken kind of the next best option, which is uh, they've you know okay Aston Martin. They that like Lawrence Stroll has, I think. You look at the jump up in the car. You look at the personnel they've brought in. Like he's shown that he's really like really serious about this, mm -hmm. and I think that's what because I believe that Honda actually spoke to. Um, Williams and McLaren it, okay. it was reported that they'd had kind of conversations but McLaren just got PTSD they were, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think away. <laughs> so I read that yeah so Aston, Aston kind of took them for a tour of the new the new gaff and yeah. that kind of helped kind of sell them on the dream because mm. you know you want to be affiliated with a serious team mm. it's like Audi aren't going to be looking to jump into bed with Sauber in terms of branding the car while it's pretty rubbish as it is right now mm. wait till hopefully it gets good in 2026 but i mean ho like honda just they just annoy me <laughs> so much because it's just like you just keep fumbling that's so and I, I hope it works out for him i hope it works out for aston martin but like you got that's got to be an l overall you look at how quick red bull and red bull were like no we're gonna go with ford instead mm, yeah yeah it's so a weird it's weird how that all played out it, it just, to be honest, for me, they just kind of frustrate me because I just want you to make a decision. I'm quite an indecisive man at times, right? But at the, <laughs> at the, at the end of the day, lads, you can't go, you can't be in and out of the sport like, what, three times separately in 13 years. That's nuts. It's like going back to an ex, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm. like, guys, like, come on, we've been here before. Don't, yeah. You know, just like multiple times. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you want to, if you want to, then fine. Just, but just accept that. Just do, it, it, make yeah. your decision, please, and don't. <laughs> it's just causing drama for everyone else. <laughs> do we think? Because um, the question's been asked already. Kind of, Martin Whitmarsh has spoken openly about Yuki Sonoda because mm. um, mm. he's Honda affiliated. Oyumu Wasa, who's Honda affiliated, mm -hmm. as well, he won the sprint One, this weekend. Yeah, third, third o only F two driver. Yeah, to yeah. win three races this year. Wow! So he's doing bits. The uh, is a Wasa. Yeah. So, what do, what do we think in terms of driver lineup? Because does it come to a point where that gap between Alonso and Stroll becomes a problem that... Because Lawrence well, Stroll... this week has been... Yeah, yeah it wasn't great. Yeah. But like, <laughs> Lawrence Stroll doesn't... I don't know what the, you know, director share breakdown at Aston Martin is, right? Yeah. Aston Martin Racing, but L Lawrence doesn't own 100% of that company. Like, there's yeah. other people involved. So, but, you know, he, but he is 100% his son, just to <laughs> He is. Have you seen the DNA test? Well, it's true. Um, <laughs> Jerry Powell show, F1 edition. <laughs> Oh do we think gosh. there's any you shot? You are the dad <laughs> of Sonoda getting to, to Aston Martin with that Honda affiliation. I think give it a bit more time. Like obviously Sonoda has been doing bits, as you guys have been saying in this podcast, recently <laughs> in the last few races. There's no denying the fact that apart from today, he had a bit of a bad one. But, you mm. know, he's been putting in some really good solid results and definitely being that kind of alpha, <laughs> no pun intended. Me. Now Gasly has left the team and he's got DeVries as a new teammate. But... Um, I think we need to give it a bit more time because Yuki can sometimes be quite crash happy. And although it's great to sort of put his name with that Honda deal, <clears throat> being a Japanese driver, and we've seen that sort of association throughout the Honda Alpha Tauri times with Honda, um, I think that we need to give it a little bit more time to start making like these big plans for his future mm. because it's only been a few races. Three years as well as a long time in Formula One. And yeah. you kind of need to be that very established name. I, th I feel like, because obviously this is his third season already, if we're, if we're looking at Yuki Snowder having six full seasons in Formula One, mm. then he has to have really cemented yeah. himself in a, yeah. in a driver battle Agreed. or a teammate battle. Agreed. To the point where it's like, oh my God, we can't let Yuki Snowder move off the grid. Whereas yeah. right it, now... It'll be interesting to see, yeah, how much Honda values that idea. Because, you know, like, um, what was it? I mean, obviously... Alpine find value in the fact that both their drivers are French. Mm -hmm. um, was it Audi said they want a, they'd like to have one German driver Especially in their Vettel. team? 
Please. Maybe. Please come. He was there. He this was weekend, in Monaco. Wasn't he? Yeah, yeah he was leave, there. man. He was, it was nice to see him back as if he just never left. Yeah. It was like he was just walking down the paddock with such purpose. Everyone's like, yeah. Mm. And he's still like, he wouldn't, yeah. <laughs> like, he's what, younger than Lewis, mm. younger than Fernando. Yeah. Right? He's still, what, do you reckon we'd see Vettel back? Mm. Do you reckon Vettel could return to I, F1? I'm that delirious that I think it'll happen. Because lots of people have made the comparison to Schumacher. Yeah. It'd be like taking a time out, retiring, taking four years Bible. break. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then coming back with a German team who'll come back into Formula One. Oh. With the whole oh, Mercedes that, Audi, and I was like, does make don't, sense. don't do it to me. Yeah, and I guess that and then doesn't. Nico Rosberg just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah mine. Akkonen, he never oh. retired. Yeah, yeah, facts. Vettel doesn't, yeah, because he's a German driver, but he's not affiliated with Mercedes at all, is he? Like, uh, no, no, because obviously there's, you know, if, if he was really affiliated, so you know, you talk about maybe Lewis when there's the rumors about him and Ferrari and all that, it's like he's been part of Mercedes for like his entire career. Vettel's not attached to like a German manufacturer, as far as I'm aware, in terms of affiliation. So, yeah, maybe that well, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you think the Audi deal would be the, the route back. Yeah, I would like to see Vettel and science partnership at Audi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think science could be a good shout. His dad as well, Carlos Science, Papa Science. Mm. Um, he's been doing some stuff with Audi, and so he's got a good relationship with oh, them yeah. already in the car, the Dakar, the car, the car, Dakar. So that's my shout for 2026. But that relies a lot on a lot of copium of Vettel coming back. He might yeah. be like, actually, I quite like my life with my kids and my wife, and just in my farm or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. yeah we'll see. There, there is, yeah, there's so much potential with that team because, as much as us, you know, I think Joe and Bias have been at quite a similar level. I think you know, Bias has over the last few races, he's been somewhat clear of Joe. But I mean, it's I think it's pretty marginal between the two of them. But none of them are, and maybe it's just because of the car. You know, if you've not got a great car, you could have the drive of your career and finish thirteenth, and mm. no one's going to realise. It's yeah, hard to yeah. kind of get that plaudits when you maybe deserve it. Um, but neither of them have, you know, it's not that star quality like when Charles jumped in the Sauber, for example. Yeah. So I think there is a potential. What, what other drivers do we think maybe for for South? Because <clears throat> Audi, it's twenty twenty six that they fully take over that team, but they they already own a significant chunk of it as well. Daniel Ricardo, dun, 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 dun. or Mick Schumacher as well. Could be. Uh, I, just shouts that are like off the grid right now that. Audi could like sort of see some some value in mm. bringing back you know you've not got competition to try and draft anyone in Schumacher's a German driver as well exactly yeah, yeah. but name. he's um, very affiliated with Mercedes he is yeah oh, but is like, he he's only he been is, there six months was. yeah <laughs> like in terms of Michael Schumacher got his first opportunity in that Jordan because Mercedes paid <laughs> essentially paid him to Mm. Yeah, no, no. Hey, Jordan no, to give him back. So he is. Shot. But it's more just sort of like, I mean, he's never going to get to the Mercedes drive. You know, so it, ultimately he's affiliated now, but you, you he could that. very much unaffiliate himself if he wanted to. You say that though, because I, I think I, I sit, you can't win a driver's championship when it's competitive with multiple teams. You can't win a driver's championship if you've got two number one drivers. So maybe Mick Schumacher, you know, if... Do you not agree? I think if if we're saying like Mercedes, like if they have a place because Lewis is retired, mm-hmm. I reckon Esteban Ocon. Really? Back oh yeah, because he, he had used the, to be his manager. Yeah. Didn't he? yeah. And he was there like with the team for a long time, like yeah. this uh, gap year between yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, to find so himself. yeah, I think that's my prediction for that. The thing is, I think you could, I, I hear that in terms of like as a second driver, but I think you could just do, no offense Mick, I think you could do better than Mick Schumacher in the second Mercedes. Like we're talking about Mercedes, that is an elite seat. Mm. Mick Schumacher, even as a number two driver would, for me, like not be at the level. I don't know. I'm feet. just, if I'm a team principal, <clears throat> you know, obviously, yeah, from a constructor's point of view, I mean, it's like you look at Aston Martin relative to, they're only a point ahead of Mercedes, even though Alonso's got all of these p- podiums. Mm. because Alonso Rolls, GP, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I know a constructor's means a lot to the team, but if you want to win a driver's title, I'm just... I feel like you you want that. The most convincing ones have been when there's been a significant gap between, you know, Hamilton Bottas or Barrichello mm. Schumacher or mm. whatever. Like, there's plenty of examples of that. I don't know. I mean, look, I, I want it. I want the best drivers in F1 as well. I'm just trying to think from like a team mm. point of view as to what actually is going to get the most points on the board. Because actually, we are losing Alfa Romeo from Not South Long. Long. Yeah. Apparently, is linking up with Haas? Apparently, apparently, I don't know if allegedly, it's confirmed. Allegedly. <laughs> but there's a talks of a 20 million deal between uh, Alfa Romeo, the car brand, 
moving from their title sponsorship of Sauber to Haas. Mm -hmm. The colours match, I guess. Red <laughs> and... Yeah. Saving white. a paint job there. <laughs> <laughs> so would like Gene Haas's name not be on the car anymore? Would it be Alfa Romeo? Would it just be Haas Alfa Romeo? Is that like a name Romeo. change, but like sort of kind of half-funded? Mm. Would make I, I'm not going to lie. It would make Haas's liveries more interesting. <laughs> I'm kind of just fed up really of just yeah. saying, here's a car with the word Haas written on the side. Jobs are good. Un. Yeah. I'm kind of fed up with that yeah. now. I know, I know they've changed, obviously, like, I know we had the, uh, the rich, oh, bring back rich energy, man. That was cool. <laughs> oh, don't do that, please. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 oh, God. Yeah, I mean, that was the, I mean, they didn't even do that livery right either. Like, he was okay, yeah, but involved. it was nothing on the JPS, the original. Come mm. on. That was great. No, no I'm surprised, I'll be honest, that Alfa Romeo is still, I don't know. Yeah. They just seem like a, very just give it up they, yeah they just it's not working lads I, mean, no. I don't know I just I'm not excited about I should be because they're like heritage like yeah. Ferrari I wish they'd do more to celebrate the heritage F1 actually heritage. I don't think they do enough to do no, it no I, I agree they don't lean into it enough now they've just got stupid dodgy streaming platforms sponsoring them yeah little crypto things yeah yeah <laughs> Stay I don't know yeah. we'll have to have to wait and see if that one's actually true because there's been lots of things that have been swirling around this week like Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari yeah which yes. is like mm, okay we did talk yeah. about that last week mm. yeah um, choreographed all by sorts of yeah. Lewis, weird yeah. rumours going no around. I think it's happening I've, yeah. I've heard it from a reliable, <laughs> <laughs> heard from a reliable source <laughs> oh have you now okay interesting yeah, yeah interesting yeah. Yeah, we'll see about that but, <laughs> reliable source being me yeah. <laughs> I said it <laughs> I saw it in a dream <laughs> <laughs> what did we who did you see in a dream Nicholas right? Satifi yeah. <laughs> oh you did yeah I had a dream about Nicholas Satifi last night which sounds worse than it was meant to but uh, yeah it was, oh, yeah so yeah. what was because you were saying so early you've you've looked into Nicholas yeah I've been trying to organize an interview with Nick Nick like we're on first name terms like yeah. nicknames Nicholas mm, um Nick. because I kind of want to see what he's up to now he's out of F1 and he's been so, like silent on social media and all that kind of stuff so I went on his website and there's like a media contact information and I emailed him last night and the email doesn't exist anymore and I was like wow he really has like Gone off, grid. He's gone, on, he's off the grid. grid. He's off the grid. Literally. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a shame because I really want to have a chance to interview him. But just see how he's doing as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. Hope, you know just check up on him. I think about right, him quite a lot, actually. I'm like, I hope he's all right. I mean, he's a millionaire's son, so he's probably going to be fine. He's probably like in Bali. He's like, got an endless supply. Yeah, he's probably the one like, with the F40 uh, on a yacht in Monaco Harbour yeah, this week. That's probably yeah. him. In disguise <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, I, yeah it's, it's funny. Can you look at his career and obviously he never did you know the, the job in f1 he had his old moments um Silverstone. hungry yeah yeah, that's it. yeah and you know i think he'll have uh you know he's, he's got the minerals to have a career in sports cars or whatever yeah i think so but i i, I think yeah that the impacts he had on the sport not just kind of culturally it's generational but <laughs> it, it, like honestly and it would be i'd i hope you get that chat mm. because i'd be really interested to hear like a candid chat with Nikki about just because I mean there's pressure enough when you're in yeah. F1 but like with all of the you kind of almost become a bit of a meme because of the crashes and because yeah. of his performances but then also everything else and obviously Abu Dhabi 21 of course is, is is a huge you know part of his legacy for want of a better term um, but like it would be because I, I think there's there's obviously I think we're all guilty of forgetting about the humanity of these drivers sometimes yeah. and it's like actually like the that must have been Mm. Like so when I see like I get I might get like dog pod for a dodgy take on Twitter like it's not a nice feeling but just imagine like knowing what went on and then how there was such a reaction to it like yeah yeah I yeah. can't even begin to imagine it. The fact that he said, you know, like he got a bit fearful for his life at some points because of the amount of death threats that he was getting. Like he had to hide security and stuff mm -hmm. because he was so worried that something awful was going to happen to him. I mean, yeah, like that's going to take a massive toll on somebody's mental health. And like you say, on top of the fact that, you know, the car wasn't in the best of states and he was frequently finding himself at the back or crashing or whatever. But yeah, he did have some good results. And I'd like to think that he knows that I... I think the majority of fans were like actually like not jokingly but genuinely happy for him like when he got that top in that practice session in mm. Hungary or whatever like yes people shared about the goatee fee and all these memes and <laughs> stuff like that but um he still he seemed like a really nice sound lad at the end of the day mm. it's just a shame that the results didn't kind of mirror that vibe yeah <laughs> yeah well, that's because I, I think you know <clears throat> 
all of these drivers, there's such a variety of characters and personalities. Mm. I think like a lot of people have warmed to like, I'm surprised it's, I feel like now people are starting to warm to him more, but like Esteban yeah. is one of them drivers. I mean, he obviously got his podium. He was hated for so long. We did like a... Why do we think, why, why do you think that was? I don't know. But I, when um, one of the places I worked before this is we did a poll on like a questionnaire on who your favourite drivers are to see like for merchandise. And Esteban Ocon had like less than 1% of the vote as that his people said that that was a favourite driver like he literally yeah. was not really liked at all I don't know if it's to do with the Brazil Max situation or what it was but yeah his uh, his likability is rocketed up is, yeah I wonder why yeah. it's been I feel like it's just been like little I guess teammate incidents as well yeah but I guess yeah he's never really been in a car where it's been like he's always just been sort of like a mid-pack car I feel like it's easier to be sort of anonymous you know I think it's not there. helped I, I like think -wise. you know he's had his run-ins with Fernando mm -hmm. as a teammate he's had his run-ins with Checo yeah. two drivers with two very strong big fan bases mm -hmm. and I guess because Esteban hasn't carried that kind of fan base himself to I think the fr um, I remember watching a, a feature that Sky Sports did about Pierre and Esteban and they were talking about how like I think they were um is it Arnu and Pross? They were kind of drawing comparisons where it's kind of you sat on one side or the other. But even in France, like Pierre is the driver that has more um seems to have more support generally right. over there, apparently like, according to according to the journalist anyway. It's like it's obviously you've got an interesting dynamic there as teammates who were very clear they grew up together I mean I remember I did a video about Esteban mm -hmm. like a long time ago and I, I went went through the weeds and learned about like he should be like he's the driver who like made it like some of, so many of these drivers come from such exuberant like privilege and wealth and like his family like literally mm -hmm. sold like the, the garage um, that his dad used to work as a mechanic and the yeah. home above it to buy like a, a van with their dog to drive around Europe going karting like he had like everything to lose mm. and it's like that that's the kind of story that should be, be, be celebrated I think more people need to hear it because it's not even a story I do to be honest yeah yeah. It's, no, he had to no, sacrifice no, like his family had to sacrifice yeah, like, yeah. Every, like properly as well yeah I mean you hear about that a lot with like Lewis Hamilton for example mm -hmm. coming from like rags to riches if you like but yeah Esteban exactly the same mm. but it's not really covered as much and it is one of the reasons i find his relationship or friendship should i say not like obviously <laughs> that kind of relationship but with stroll so funny and ironic yeah. mm. it's because obviously strolls come from <clears throat> riches his whole life yeah and yet he's still so close and same with mick as well you know coming from a family where you've got the schumacher name there's got to be a lot yeah. of money going around there and, and they gravitate towards each other but yeah i like esteban a lot and i'm glad that lots of people are sort of waking up and realizing that he is just a quite sweet driver like he got podium today which i'm thrilled about and saying like esty bestie baby <laughs> in his uh in his Your uh, mentions are gonna be, yeah i went a bit yeah, mad yeah. but um yeah no it's i'm glad that that sort of emerged over the last few years mm. um because yeah he's a race winner whether that'll happen again who knows but just good vibes you know yeah he seems a sweet lad good vibes tall man as well yeah very tall, very tall man mm. I'd like to see you go back to back with him as your tall man as well. I mean, in a Formula One guy, I actually don't think I fit underneath that. No, anyway. you know what I want to see? You know that video you did with Lando with the whole like training mm. like... Oh, yeah, like, training like but him. Yeah, yeah. doing it with Esteban because I want to see you both doing the neck thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, side by His side. His neck it would just be just Wham. yeah yeah crazy Wham. <laughs> surface area he's like the peter crouch of f1 yeah I love he is, it. He is, <laughs> great he's going and he's like super endearing just like peter. i'd love esteban to have a podcast yeah mm. who would be the best podcast host this is a good Ooh, one. Boy. who would have the best um, podcast or be be the best host not lance because he literally gives like three word answers to us <laughs> yeah he's very concise isn't so, he? yeah, 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 yeah probably yeah, not true, him true. Who's a waffler? Fernando would be hilarious. Fernando would just he all just stories, drama yeah. every mm. week. The stories, <clears> yeah, man. Like, so this week I'm dating Taylor Swift. <laughs> okay, Fernando. Wait, the Taylor Swift yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Who else would be good? I think. George's podcast, I feel, would have to be <laughs> like, I don't know, something Everyone very has British. To wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Everybody's got a little cap and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you'd even talk like about on this podcast. House. Yeah, in the, in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. escape to the country. Yeah. There's a greyhound yeah. nearby. Yeah, Look. yeah. You know, like Dion Dublin, he used to be a footballer. Yeah. He, he does. Um, he does oh, like homes yeah, on the homes on the hand. George, after he, would... he retires, do it, George. Bargain hunt. <laughs> Come on, bargain, <laughs> <laughs> bargain hunt. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> that would be a great little combo. That would be that. that would be great. That would be amazing. I feel like a Charles Leclerc podcast would be good. 
but he just it would it would have to open with slow piano music <laughs> to set yes. the mood. Do, 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 do. Yeah, like it'd yeah. be a very emotional. Yeah, Charles would do a really open good true crime podcast. True crime. Yeah, yeah, he would. The crime of how he never got a podium in Monaco. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Investigate. Sorry, maybe too soon. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good video, um, YouTube video <clears throat> title actually. I, I think I could frame that true crime. Yuki's food like podcast be like a mukbang. Mm. Like, Ooh. Be good. Who's that? Sorry, Yuki. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Yuki would be a great. Mm. Yeah, he wants to open his own restaurant, doesn't he? Mm. Does he? Yeah, yeah. He's, oh, he's talked about it a few yeah. times. So he's always any opportunity to talk about food, he talks yeah, about food. Yeah. Um, actually, w so with your podcast, Katie, with Small Talk, smooth. It's very smooth. Um, See, well, so big bucks. <laughs> right now, so it's typically kind of it's you, and then you get kind of fan question. Do you think you would ever like want to get? Because I guess it's quite a different. You know, there's different podcasts for everything and sometimes it is nice, like the stuff that, you know, on my channel where I upload it to podcasts, it's just me waffling, mm. basically. And it is kind of nice to do that as well. I guess the guest dynamics a little bit different, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm loving this kind of social interaction. I haven't done podcasts with people in so long, yeah. <laughs> so it's quite nice. But yeah, I do quite like the sort of being able to sit on my own I don't film it or anything like that so I can look however I want I can just roll out of bed and it's great <laughs> yeah, and yeah. just sort of like waffle on about certain subjects like I can control the narrative and it's quite nice and refreshing um, but yeah I mean sometimes it gets a bit lonely like I had small talk before like the name and everything like that uh, in 2019 and I did a couple of podcasts with people but one I didn't understand how like to really set up my mics and stuff I mean this studio that you've got here is amazing but like I travelled to New York to interview Nick Heidfeld for example mm. and I got all the way there and I had this like hour and a half interview with him <clears throat> didn't plug the mics in properly oh, so no. you can't hear it mm. and at that point I was like I'm not destined for podcasting this isn't <laughs> for me <laughs> um, oh, but yeah like I like doing it solo it's nice yeah I, I did similar actually when I went to Canada last year I did a whole segment like with loads of people and my mic wasn't plugged in properly. I think, so. it's, I think it's the one of yeah. the worst feelings in, in content creation is just that sinking feeling and mm -hmm. you look at the peaks and it's just yeah, and I'm it's like, like yeah, not yeah. ideal. But just, obviously, uh, it's great to see you thriving on your own as well now, because obviously you're not working for WTF One, and I know people are obviously going to be, oh, what, Katie, what are you doing now? Because obviously people are interested. So, yeah, what is the kind of what are you up to now? And I guess maybe as much as you want to talk about why did that part of your working life finish and why has this new part started yeah so i mean i really enjoyed my time at wtf1 and i thought i did a good job as website editor there and we had the podcast and things were great but then learned that matt and tommy were going to go and do their own thing and so i was kind of left with the decision do i stay aboard wtf1 i knew straight away that the like the landscape of the brand was going to be completely different without yep. matt and tommy like it didn't take you know it, like anybody could figure that mm, out they yeah. were such a big part of it so i was like well i could either stay and then sort of be part of that next chapter and i stayed for a little while helping some of the newbies come in like we just recorded our watch along with kieran he was one of them mm -hmm. um and so i was there for a month <clears> or so behind the scenes trying to help them out as much as possible for like this new chapter um but ultimately i kind of took some time and decided that Although WTF1 was great, there were lots of things that I really missed, like being able to travel. I felt like I was just locked up in my house all the time when mm. I was at WTF1. Like I could never be further than two foot from my laptop. And yeah, yeah, like like, yeah was, a lot of content changed and stuff. And yeah, and it just like wasn't really, like I didn't really have much of a life. I didn't see my friends. I didn't see much of my family. Mm -hmm. You know, any notification on my phone, I'd be like, <clears> oh, what's that from Red Bull? Oh, okay, I've got to quickly jump on something right this now. Yeah. And so, yeah, I decided that I wanted to have a bit more freedom, a bit more flexibility, travel. And also I really missed speaking to people, interviewing people, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff and being in pit lanes and being in media pens and all that kind of thing. So um, I put some feelers out to say that I think I might be thinking of leaving and is there anything out there? Formula E straight away, we're like, yeah, we'll take you like with, in a heartbeat, which was... And you'd worked with Formula E in the past, right? Um, I covered the championship but never directly worked for them. So oh, right, it, yeah. it, like all the stuff I'd done with Formula E, that was kind of the, the place that I went and learned everything to do with like motorsport journalism I didn't go to university or anything like that so everything that I did both right and wrong was mm. like learn in that Formula E paddock mm -hmm. um, and so that was like a really nice full circle moment of um, I've been there since season one covering it to then now representing the championship which is a great honor um doing some freelance stuff with them and uh yeah then also doing some f1 stuff still with sports illustrated so interviewing personalities uh 
in F1, which is super exciting. Unfortunately, a load of interviews I had lined up got cancelled because Imola got cancelled. Yeah. So that was a shame. Obviously, tiny in retrospect of like the whole issue going on in Emilia Romagna, but still it was a, a bit of a shame because I had interviews with Checo lined up and like Mick Schumacher and right. all this kind of thing, mm. Yuki and some of the Alpine guys. So that was a shame, but my time will come and I'll be able to speak to them hopefully later this season. Um, but yeah, I'm just loving life i feel i was saying some the other day i feel so empowered like yeah. most empowered i think i've ever done in my career of like having that self-belief and going freelance because there was no although you know people like formula re were like well we're happy to work with you and we want to work with you and have that contract and stuff you know that that might have been the only thing and then that contract runs out at some point right and you're like well what do i do now but i thought well while i'm i have the chance to i'm gonna take it on see what happens mm. unfortunately i've landed on my feet and yeah it's going well i'm enjoying it i'm very happy <laughs> amazing we love good stuff good I, think, I think it's just it's just good to be in, in control of what you do and mm. the content you make as well ultimately yeah, yeah, totally so. yeah well I, really I think nice. i think the the landscape's changing like i'm you know most of the people listening watching like you know if it's a if it's a good quality conversation if it's yeah, filmed well and it's like the the barrier to entry is lower and I think more and more you're seeing um, creators, you know, who, who, you know, you work for a company or whatever, but you, because you can do so, so much on your own, mm -hmm. you it, like, it's easy enough to, to, to record a podcast and, and microphones are as cheap as they've, they've ever been, you know, especially with like short form, like TikTok, it's really easy to kind of get started and, yeah. and put yourself out there. And I just, I, yeah, I think it's just, you know, not just you leaving WTF1, Matt and Tom as well. Like it's just indicative of how the, the tides are changing, I suppose. And, and people listen to people and, and individuals and, and that's what the audience is drawn to. <clears throat> and, you can control that now and and you know you're in a position now where you can do the stuff because i'm sure there's a, there's parts of all jobs that we don't enjoy mm. you know there's always bits but like you've got now that opportunity because you're not you know beholden to anyone else you can just do what enjoy do the stuff you enjoy doing most like interviewing drivers you've got that control now which i just think you know that kind of makes sense going forwards and i think it's going to be harder and harder for like companies to you know, even someone like Sky Sports, mm. like to, to keep hold of, you know, if, so if someone builds a platform on Sky Sports, you're going to get to a stage where it's going to be hard to justify not going off and doing it by yourself because you've already got the opportunities, you've got a direct line of Contact. communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you, you don't have a boss telling you you need to do this at this time because you you've got that full control, right? Yeah, no, definitely. I think, yeah, power to the creator is really coming through strong like obviously the stuff that matt and tommy are doing is brilliant and they're sort of in control of it and doing what they want to do i mean they're currently in monaco on a I mean, red bull energy station like they're, they're, yeah, they're yeah, probably yeah. having a great time right now so you know not jealous <laughs> at all <laughs> but um yeah and i'm still friends with matt and tommy which i feel like lots of people are like did they have a big falling out which is one of the reasons like when matt and tommy said they were leaving at the same time i gave about six weeks until i then handed my notice in and in an ideal world i was like i'd love it if we were all announced that we were leaving together yeah because i <laughs> i am a massive overthinker and i was like oh well if they say matt and tommy are off they're gonna people are gonna think oh that kate is obviously horrible they've pushed she's pushed them out <laughs> but I pushed them was, over the edge yeah, yeah she's the reason they've left and i saw some people say that like why did you get matt and tommy sacked i was like babes uh, go away. it is mad isn't it how like, people cells, though, have just such strong room. opinions on stuff they have no idea yeah, yeah. like uh, when when you know matt and like I've been chatting to him about it for months, literally like ages. And it's just like the theories I'd see people coming up <laughs> with was just like, you're so fast. But like, but it's, it's, but then I suppose that like, that's the thing when, even when you are very open and transparent immediately about what's going on, people are still going to debate. I think it's, it's heightened as well when it comes to like online media stuff, because when, yeah, yeah, like yeah. when you said you can kind of do what you want and when you want, you also, when you watch someone do what they want, when they want, mm. you feel a bit closer to them. Mm. So I think people sometimes like misinterpret things that happen because they think they've got like a deep layer of understanding yeah. of what's going on, mm. but they just don't. Mm. And with companies and stuff like that, obviously yeah, it's going to yeah. be like loads of layers of what's happened that people can't say mm. out of like professionalism. Yeah, yeah. People just see something happen and go, I know Tom and Matt because I watch them all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then just think that, you know, 
Yeah. Something's, something's kicked off when it hasn't. Um, yeah, I'm afraid there's no drama. No yeah. teeters. No drama. Yeah. Oh, no, I just decided to leave. Shit. Well, <laughs> I can subscribe everyone. No. You, <laughs> you. No clickbait thumbnail here. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so are, are you... Are you planning on going to any races this year? Have you got anything? Uh, Silverstone, or? yes. And then I'm going to try and go to Sam Fort, which would be good. Oh, and lovely. I should have an interview with Max in Sam Fort. So that's oh, going to be Oh, wow. Crazy. That is yeah, going to be crazy. Be good. Um, and then Kota as well. I've always wanted to go to the race in Texas and it's the weekend of my birthday. So I thought, let's do it. Yeah. Brilliant. So that should be good. Good stuff. Love it. Yeah. And a good opportunity to meet any fans as well. That's always nice. Yeah. Like, I find like meeting people because... You know, before you first appeared on WTF1 podcast, you know, what no was fans. your... I was going <laughs> to... you got no fans. you got, I no, got fans. no fans. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you, you've been to races since and met people in, in person? Yeah, only... Uh, I've been to a couple of races at Silverstone. And yeah, that's very unusual. Like mm. having people come up and be like, oh, you're so-and-so from WTF1 <laughs> or from this or from that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's been wild but um we went to the p1 live show actually a few weeks we ago. did yeah yeah being recognized there yeah. and just it was very it's just so it feels so weird of like somebody that's started all of this because i got bored in the summer holidays and i created a blog in my bedroom <laughs> and then like that's nearly 10 years ago and how much has changed since then is wild yeah. and like you know when i went when i did my a levels and stuff at school pretty much failed all those <laughs> and would like my teachers were saying you want to go into journalism like are you stupid like you're not really? going to do it unless you go to university you're going to hit a ceiling and like all of these things they were so negative about this like that's small awful. dream I it hate, is i hear that's I've, yeah. i hear that kind of thing more often as well and i'm just yeah. like these teachers need retraining. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. The, I think all, there's like a, there's like an academic level of like teaching, but there's also just like that human level. Yeah. If you can't motivate kids to just, cause like <laughs> choose a dream job for fuck's yeah. sake. Good for you for you not do? like listening. Cause a lot of kids would have just listened <laughs> yeah, to that and accepted, oh, okay, I'm limited. I can't do yeah. this in life. But like, actually that makes your, like, do you often, do you think about, back about it? Cause you know, you, you're excelling. Mrs. Mrs. Jones. And, yeah. <laughs> <Good>. like, <laughs> but not just like you're in a, a space that's been so male dominated for so long as well. And then, you know, to come through the, you know, you've not gone to university, you've, you know, talked down to, in terms mm. of like your ambitions going forward, like you should be proud of yourself. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's, and it's not, it's a great, it's going good. I think it's just so nice. Like, you know, you're, you're without even knowing you're inspiring like plenty of other people to give it a go, especially knowing that as well, because mm -hmm. there's going to be loads of people out there who'd love, like this is such a privilege to like work in and around motorsport and in F1. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, so many people want to do it and maybe feel like they can't, feel like they haven't got the, the IQ, they haven't got like the knowledge, haven't got the contacts, haven't got the, all that. But like, if you just, and this is what's so nice about like social media now, we can just do stuff. Mm. And, you know, people, it kind of works in a way that if, if it's good and people like listening to you that they will come eventually and it's just yeah. you need to be dedicated and yeah you know, there have been plenty of times where you've you'd have done stuff and no one's watching yeah but that's okay exactly yeah. it takes time like it's 10 years ago like i said that i created that blog hmm. and for the longest time like it took about seven years of hard graft and like using my holidays of i worked in a fabric shop i worked in a hairdressers i then worked in a marketing company for garden and kitchen stuff and like all of this different things and then all of my free time my holiday was spent on formula one or motorsport mm. like just any chance that i could get to be in a paddock and learn i did and yeah it took seven years of that for me to finally get given a full-time opportunity and mm. then i've like taken out of both hands and like you say we we're all in super fortunate positions to be here but yeah it's not just been like an overnight thing and there have been lots of times that people have said that i should give up you know my like i love my dad but my dad included like when i first started he was like if you're not making money on this in the next three months you should just quit like three months into it mm. thank god i didn't it took seven years <laughs> but um i'm so glad and he even sent me a voice note the other day and was like actually i have to say i, I was completely wrong and i'm really glad that you didn't listen to me because mm. you've you, you you know you're smashing it so i was like oh thanks <laughs> but yeah so don't don't give up listen to your which camera are we Listen Rip. to your dreams and just go for it. <laughs> yeah, facts. And the thing, the thing is with like um, journalism and media, there's so many like different routes in. Mm. I feel like every time I, I hear someone who works in like journalism, especially talk about it, they they have like a completely different story, backstory mm. to how they got into it. Yeah. Through like some opportunity yeah. with some person and da -da -da -da. so yeah, no, there's loads, there's loads of ways to get into, so the, many ways. You know, into the into the dream job that you want. Yeah. Absolutely. Just keep passionate. Yeah, man.
Oh, like mom, we're, we're the yeah, we're, this is like a TED talk. Yeah, man, I love it. Being inspirational. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Well no, no, no. It's, it's, it's good. We're no inspiring. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, it's important. I think it's important. And um, yeah, I think that's a good place to wrap it. Yeah, finish thanks. on good vibes. Yeah. Katie, pleasure. Absolute thank pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed myself. Good. I'm glad. Thank yeah. you very much for coming. Um, again, check you out on at Katie Katie Fairman, Fairman on Twitter, at Katie Motorsport on Instagram, because I couldn't have both so oh ah, fuming <laughs> Sorry to whoever, 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 i don't want to say just google me because that sounds really like <laughs> just, google nice. me. just google me like, i'm it. very googleable <laughs> it's <Very famous. laughs> probably the easiest way because there's so many yeah. bloody usernames that's it and small talk podcast as well yeah mm, it is indeed. thank you keep it up keep fighting the good fight um <laughs> thank, you, thank you all for watching listening uh we will see you on sunday for the spanish Grand Prix Spania. from a circuit to Catalonia with no final chicane. Yeah. yeah. Woy, 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 woy. We've really built this up. If it's just normal, like mm. if it's dead, like it's, it usually oh, is. No, it's going. It's, I'm, like, I'm part <laughs> of the Monaco Hater Society. I'm also part of the <laughs> Catalonia. I'm into so picking up these badges. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Everyone. a scout, you've got all the badges yeah, sewn yeah, yeah. onto your top. What circuits do you actually <laughs> like? Um, and on that note <laughs> <laughs> no I'm a big Silverstone man or a big okay. Belgian man I like the classics mm. big... I actually like Jeddah a lot as well to be yeah. fair as a track that's great yeah, but Jeddah's like Sochi track. Qatar Qatar's great for not but not for F1 and Spain can get in a bin I apologize well I can't wait to tune in next week <laughs> <laughs> Spain can get in the bin <laughs> don't forget to like no, it's, gonna, it's gonna prove me wrong it's gonna be and where, where, else, where, else, where else can they find us where um, else can they where oh. else are oh, what other platforms um, this week uh, buy me a cheetah.com buy me a cheetah.com I was gonna say we're gonna give context to that yeah, yeah, yeah. You have oh, to yeah, watch the live show back. Yeah, yeah, true. You have context yeah. of the cheetah just lurking behind you the whole, just waiting to pounce. Yeah, people can be so <laughs> confused. <laughs> just realise that just watch the podcast. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Right. Pleasure. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. Ciao, adios. We are done. Goodbye. Bye.